start a series this Sunday, and it will continue on next Sunday. And I'm not sure for how long it's going to keep going. Uh, we'll just see where the Lord directs us, all right? So, um, but the title of this, of this series starting t- today is entitled Direction. Okay, he's got somebody to say direction. Um, and I think in our lives, we all, I believe that in our lives, we all need direction in our lives. And I think that sometimes we may confuse correction or we may confuse direction with correction. And, you know, you, we, you get to the point where you're like, man, I'm, I'm why, you know, they ain't got to tell me what to do. They ain't got to get on to me. They ain't got to correct me all the time. And, and really what they're, they're not really trying to correct you. They're just trying to direct you. Uh, because in my life, that's the way it had always worked out in my life. You know, I've always had people, I was talking to Brother Ruben about this, it's like, you know, I've, I've always had people around me who pushed me, like pushed me. Like didn't just, I, mijo, pat me on the back, except for my mom. She, she did some of that. But, but anybody else, it always seemed that, that I always had people around me to like just push me to become better. From teachers to relatives, to pastors, Pastor Sam, and to, and to uh, many people in my life. I mean, always had people that pushed me. And let me tell you something. I believe it made me better. Because in reality, it wasn't that they were correcting me so much. They may have thrown a little correction in there, Brother Daniel. But it was more about direction. Right? So that's what I want to I want to talk about this. And today it's going to be just a, it's going to be the very first installment. So it's going to be an introduction to this. And I, I really believe that we're going to get blessed in our soul today because just like I had direction in my life, that's how God works. God also directs us and he does it through his spirit. Come on. Amen. And, and, I, and I said this before and I said, you know, it's it's one it's kind of like. You don't want to just have faith to say you have faith. That's not the reason we have faith. It's to say, I have faith. Well, I believe, well, no, it's meant to be used. It's meant to believe God for things. I mean, you know, a lot of people think that all you use faith for is for spiritual things. But, man, you can use faith in God for even the little smallest thing. You may just need, I mean, I mean, you may just need a meal for that day. Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm using my faith. I believe that there's a full meal. Bing, bing. What? All oh, the, I felt the Lord tell me to come bring you some chicken. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Or cook you a little something. You know, uh, you can use your faith for that. But you can also use your faith for bigger things, for the big things that you need to believe for. Some of us in here, we need to really use our faith to help our marriages. Come on, somebody. I ain't looking at nobody. Uh, we need to use our faith to help our children. Come on. We need to use our faith to help our community. We need to use our faith. We need different, different things of that nature. Okay. Well, the same thing is with having God's spirit. How many of you in here are born-again believers in the house? Are you? Come on. Say it like you're proud of it at least. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, I am. Okay, here we go. All right, let's get into it. All right, well, watch this. When you got born again, God deposited on the inside of you the Spirit of God, which is also known as the power of God, the character of God, the establishment of God. And so now you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, who we have learned to come to know is our teacher, right? He's our advocate. He's our standby. He's our intercessor. But he's also our director, That is by the means of how God gives us direction. So here's the very first direction tip before I get into the word that I want to give you this morning is this. Tip number one, get saved. Okay, get saved. Get born again. What does that mean? That means give your life to Jesus. That's tip number one. Now, many of you in here, you are all believers in this house, right? But many of you that are watching, you may not be. You may not know what that means. That means just give your life to Jesus, and I may give you the opportunity right after this message so that you can become a born-again believer. Because without that, you you can't be directed by the Spirit. Okay? So here's the idea with that. If you don't have Jesus in your life, and let's just say you have people in your life who are willing to direct you in the right way. They're willing to give you advice. They're willing to give you counseling in the right way. Okay. Well, you may be getting direction. And uh, you, you may be getting directed in the right way, but you're going the wrong way. 
if that makes sense. All right? You're getting the right information, but you're heading the wrong direction. <laughs> okay? But we need to get the right information to head the right direction. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so, so this is where Jesus comes into play. He is the one who's going to give us direction in this life. Okay? Um, so let's get into the word, and let's learn a little bit about this direction. Romans 8.14, King James translation. We're going to start there. Romans 8.14, King James translation. And it reads like this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God or directed by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Can I read that again? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, that means the Spirit of God is going to lead some of us. And if you find yourself being led by the Spirit of God, now you are known as a son of God. Okay? All right, let's read that in the New Living Translation. It says this, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are Children of God. Okay, how many of you in here consider yourself a child of God? Right? You're a child of God, right? Okay, so according to this scripture, how do we know that we are children of God? By being led by the Spirit. It didn't mention anything about being led by the flesh. Right? (laughs) Right? It's being led by the Spirit. That means that the Spirit has something to share. Remember, this is just the beginning, guys. I'm just opening this thing up for you this morning. So uh, being led by the Spirit now allows us to understand that we are children of God. Again, you can't just say I'm a child of God and not being led by the Spirit. I don't know what to do. I don't know about, Okay, so the Spirit always has direction. Now, watch what Proverbs 3, 6 says uh, in the King James translation. And this is the key right here. It says this. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Why? Because he shall direct your paths. Praise God. Now watch this. Whether you acknowledge him as God or you acknowledge him as Jesus, that's the same person. Come on. Or you acknowledge him as God, you acknowledge him as the Spirit. It's the same person because they're three in one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And they all have the same agenda. They all have the same idea. It's to get you to the same place. Come on, somebody. Amen. Whether it's God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. But here we're going to look at as acknowledging the Holy Spirit, he shall direct your paths. Now watch what it says in the CEV translation. It says this, always, so say always. Let him lead you. Now go back to Romans 8, 14. For all who are led by the Spirit. So who's the leader? Come on, the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. All right. Always let him lead you, and he will clear the road for you to follow. Praise God. So watch this, guys. You can't follow somebody if you're not being led. By them. Y'all remember when y'all were young? Some of y'all were young and you used to get yourself in trouble? I'm looking at you. No, no. Remember that when y'all, when y'all were, <laughs> you were teenagers, you remember? I was going to call you Tasha. You know, Sister Nancy, uh, when <laughs> we were young and we get ourselves in trouble because we were hanging around with the wrong people and your mom would always tell you, why do you keep hanging around with those people? Every time you hang around with them, you get in trouble. And then, and who showed you how to cut your hair like that? And and who told you to get tattoos on your arms like that? That was my mom telling me that. And then she said, let me see, uh, who are you hanging around with? And then next thing you know, I was like, hey, mama, this is uh, so-and-so. This is one of my friends. She looks at him. She's like, hmm, he's got the same haircut, and he's got tattoos on his arm. Hmm. That guy, my son, that guy. And she's like, hey, you're just being a follower. 
You're just following what this guy's doing. That's where you got that from. I never taught you about having no mullet. I always give you a chili bowl haircut. But this guy's got a mullet. And then you got a mullet. Now, long hair, party in the back, business in the front, all right? And then you got, now you got all them tattoos on your arms and it's just like they, no, mijo, uh-uh, mm-mm. You're hanging around with the wrong people. You're hanging around with the wrong crowd. They're not leading you right. They're not leading you in the right path in the right way. Because I was a follower. Come on. I was being led by somebody. Okay. In the same instance, we can be led and hang around with the power and the spirit of God. And let him teach us. But watch this. It all is determined on how much you acknowledge him. Uh, I remember uh, when I first got saved back in uh, September of 2002, um, a month prior to that, I was, unfortunately, I, was, I spent some time in the, in the, in the county mansion. <laughs> I'm going to say it like that. Some of y'all get the picture. Don't say nothing. Don't be laughing because y'all, y'all probably there too at some point. I was there for a few days. Spent some time there. I got out in August, and then a month later, I went to God's house, and boom, I got changed. Amen. Praise the Lord. He saved me. So, I mean, prior to getting saved, I wasn't doing anything good, honestly. Like, I didn't have a 9-to-5 job. I did have a job, but it wasn't a 9-to-5 regular little job out there. I was more like in the pharmaceutical area. Y'all with me? Daniel smirks a little. He's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, bro. I was in there. So I didn't have this kind of type of stuff. So when I got saved, I didn't have a job, okay? But I knew, Bert, you can't go back to the pharmaceutical job. That's what I was thinking to myself. You can't go back to that. Uh, You need to get you a real job. I said, okay. There we go. Well, I got a phone call. Hey, Bert, listen, man, they're hiring somebody at so-and-so place over there. Uh, man, go check it out right now because they're hiring right now and they'll, they need people. I was like, all right, cool, man. I'm, I'm going to head out that way. And so there I go, well, I didn't know that that place of business was on this side of town, and I ended up on the other side of town. So I go drive, and I lived in Big Spring, so I'm, like, heading out towards, like, the state hospital out there, La Mesa Highway, heading out towards Lubbock. And so I'm, like, you know, driving out there, and I don't see that place of business, and I'm like, I was like, I don't see it. So I give, I give them a phone call. I say, hey, what's the name of that company again? I don't seem to see it. They're like, oh, bro, you're on the wrong side of town. You're supposed to be on that side. And I was like, oh, man. I said, golly. I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to turn back. So then I turn back around. Remember, I was saved already, right? I was already saved, looking for a job. And then I turn around. But here's the deal. I didn't tell you all this. Before all that, I had somebody tell me, hey, Bert, do you, have, do you have a job? And I was like, man, right now, unfortunately, I don't have a job. And he was like, you know you can find a job in the Word. And I was like, what? Like, yeah, yeah, it's in there. And so I didn't know too much about the Bible, but I do remember seeing a book that looked like the word job in it. And I thought, oh, maybe that's what I need to know. I said, you mean, you mean Job? They're like, no, 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 Job, it looks like job, but it's pronounced Job. He says, no, it's not in the book of Job. He says, it's actually in the book of Genesis. And I was like, in the book of Genesis? He says, yeah, where Adam was in the Garden of Eden, and God gave him a job to tend the garden, to watch after it. And then he was given a job to name the animals. And then he was given a job to take care of his wife, and he messed up on that one, right? Praise God. So anyways, so then I was like, oh, oh, I, I, I got it. He goes, yeah, there is your job right there. Just get that word. Put it on the inside of you, and then begin to start speaking it. And I was like, oh, okay, great. I, God, in the name of Jesus, like Adam, and I started doing that. I found a job there. Okay, then that's when I got that phone call, go blah, blah, blah. So I was in the wrong area, right, wrong side of town, right, looking for a job. So then I turned back around, and as I'm heading back into town, listen to this. I felt something on the inside of me, and I'm going to go so far as to say I heard something. Say, turn here. I said, turn here. Okay, well, when I turned over there, there was fiberglass systems. This was a a plant in the Big Spring uh, uh, City, uh, which which you made fiberglass fittings for the oil fields. But I have gone to that place 
several times, and they never called me back. I turned in applications after applications and never got nothing. And I said, and I and see, I acknowledged God. I, I knew it was him telling me. He said, turn here. I said, well, God, I've already come to this place so many times, and they never hired me, never called me back. And God said, just go. So I did. I go. Boom. There was no signs that said we're hiring. There was no signs that says we need applicants. There was none of that. I just was like, man, for real, God, I'm going to look like a fool, right? So then I go in there, and I say, I'm looking for the front office. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Go right there. So I walk in there, and I said, I said, hey, by any chance, are y'all guys hiring? And that guy that was at, sitting in the, he was, I guess, the secretary, that guy was sitting there, and then he looked over to the, what, what I didn't know at that time, but I, I found out who he was, the plant manager. They look at each other, and they were like, see, you didn't even have to turn in. To let people know that we needed to hire. Already, you got somebody sitting here. That's the man right there. He's the one you're going to hire. There it is. And I was like, what? They were like, man, we're about to turn into the, uh, you know, unemployment place saying that we needed applications. We needed to help. But now we don't need to because you showed up. Can I ask you two questions? I said, sure. He said, can you pass a background check? I said, yeah. He says, can you pass a drug test? I said, yes. He said, all right, well, just go ahead. We'll, we'll set you up. You go do take care of that business over there. And then come back in three days. And boom, you're hired. I didn't even fill out an application. But it all came from the fact that I was acknowledging God. And he directed my paths. Now, that's one of many instances where the Lord directed, where the Lord directed me. So this is a key, guys. That is one of the keys right there. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your paths. He is a director. He'll give direction into your life. And, you know, there's many ways on how God would do this because some of us in here may say, well, I, don't, I can't hear the voice of God. All right, that's fine. One of the, pri- the very first ways that you can be directed um, by the Spirit is through his word. That's where you start. Start in the word of God and practice it. Practice it. You know, um, I mean, you can find whatever it is is, is in this word. Boom, you can turn that and receive it, and then boom, confess it and receive whatever it is that you need. You can find a good marriage in here. Come on, good kids up in here. You can find a good life up in here. You can find all kinds of cool stuff. You can find courage up in here. You can find love up in here. Uh, You can find peace. And that's another way how God also directs us is by peace. Another way is through wisdom. Another way is through people who are at where you want to be. That's another way that God can lead you uh, in the in in the spirit and give you direction. Now, watch what Ephesians 316, the King James translation says. It says this. This is Paul. uh, Yeah, this is Paul. And he's talking to the church of Ephesus and he's encouraging them with something. But you guys know that, you know, as he is encouraging them, it's kind of like he's encouraging us today. So watch this. And he's, he, this is a prayer that Paul uh, is sharing with the Ephesians. He says that he would grant you. There's a word grant right there. I don't know if any of you uh, need a grant in your life right now, but there's the word right there. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Oh, praise God. That means that. The inner man right here is going to strengthen you. It's going to help you with your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. It's going to bring strength into you. Uh, But here's what I like what the CEV says. The CEV says this. He says, God is wonderful and glorious. Someone say wonderful and glorious. And then he says, and I pray that his spirit will make you become strong followers. Okay. Watch this. Not even knowing this, guys, but as I was studying this last night and I, that right there, that scripture right there, it just popped out to me and it stood out to me. And I said, God. Wow. I said, what has been keeping me strong for 18 years without falling into all sorts of weird things and has kept me strong in faith? has kept me strong following you is that you have been giving me direction. The whole entire time, I have just been, God, what do I need to do here? 
what do I need to do with this? God, I mean, it's like I'm constantly just asking, acknowledging him. You know, the key is this, is you, you allowing yourself to recognize God as if he is practically right there. You know, some people say, you know, oh, I'm not going to talk to somebody I can't see. Right? But listen, it's a key. You acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will give you direction. And let me tell you right now, guys, God is setting this thing up for us because he's about to start giving you some directions. Watch this, some directions. Watch this. You know, all my life, I always thought this to myself. You know, I always thought, man, when, you know, I told you earlier that I've always had people that were in my life that, were, that would push me. And sometimes, you know, I would feel like, man, they're just like, correcting me all the time and I feel like you know they're just like they make me feel like I can't do good enough right but I never really took it in that manner um, but as I continue to keep learning about this I'm figuring out and found out that really what God was doing and what people were doing was actually giving me direction so that let me just say this so that next time you have people that may seem like they're giving you correction it could be that it's just God giving you direction. You know what I'm saying? It could be that God is just redirecting where you're going to. Because let me tell you why. Because you are acknowledging him in all your ways. And when you begin to start doing that, he begins to start directing your paths. Are y'all with me this morning? Come on. Amen. So... Again, this is just the beginning because I'm going to take you through this whole, I mean, I'm going to give you guys ways on how he does this. There's many cool ways, just how he does this, how he leads us, and we're going to learn something. We're really going to get ourselves, and it's just going to produce, it's going to produce, I mean, healthiness in our spirit, in our soul. And let me tell you something, just like what, um, it's a third John, verse 2 says that, beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. But this, part of this right here is going to give us direction on where to go. I was talking to a young man the other day over the phone, and then I even was talking to another young man in person a couple of days ago. And, of course, they were sharing about some things. Uh, one of them is like a team leader for a department that he's in. And he was just sharing how, you know, it's difficult working around people that just don't want to, they, they're, they, you know, they're not engaged. They're not interested. They don't call in. They don't let me know they're not going to be here. They all these, these things. And he was just sharing these things with me. And he was like, man, I'm getting frustrated, man. I just don't know what to do. I'm tired of babysitting them. I don't know, you know, this kind of stuff. And I was just like, I said, well, you're not supposed to be doing that. I mean, these are grown adults here. You got grown people here that you're working, working with. I said, you should never think that you're babysitting these people. I said, but one thing you do need to think about is are you giving them direction? Because that's what they're needing. They're needing direction. I said, they're probably just as frustrated as you are because you haven't been giving them direction. All you've been doing is giving them correction. All you've been doing is telling them how not, not so good they're doing. And then I shared one scripture with them that Paul said, I have learned to become all things to all men in hopes that they may come to know Jesus. Ooh, praise God. I said, you know what? You might want to kind of try to understand where they're coming from. And learn how to direct that. Give them direction. This is where we're heading to. This is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to do. Do you want to be a part of it or not? If you don't, well, well, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, take some time off. Sit down. But there are some of us in here who, who, are, who would rather be on the stands, right? Some watch the game play. But there's some of us in here who would rather be on that field and be a part of the game and make it happen. But watch this. That can't happen if we don't learn how to direct them from the stands to the game. Praise <laughs> God. And this is what God is going to do for us. Let me tell you right now. All right, he's like, oh, no, 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 watch this. Because how many of y'all received what I just spoke to you? Did you receive this? All right, watch this. Then it's about to happen. Stick with me because this thing is going to be incredible. Direction. Someone say direction. 
So number one, get saved. Number two, we need direction. I believe the, the did it stop? Yeah, probably. All right, our live feed. <laughs> probably. Is it still on? Is anybody, who's watching it? Somebody? Okay, good, good, good. She watching it and, okay, good, good, good. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, we're going to end up with that right there. We're going to get that again. This is just the introduction. So y'all guys just stick with me because we're going to get somewhere in the house. How many of y'all got that this morning? Amen. Come on, praise God. Stand to your feet. We're done this morning. Direction. Where am I heading to? What's this life about? What am I to do next? Am I even heading in the right direction? I don't even know where I'm at. What am I doing here? You know those kind of questions pop up? Let me tell you guys, you just need direction. And you have the one inside you, the spirit on the inside of you, who is going to give you direction. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and that's what will end up happening. How many are ready? Come on, amen. Because it's a new start. There's something about to happen in your life that you're like, wow, man, I didn't think this was ever going to happen, and it's going to happen for you. I like the next, in the next teaching, I want to teach on peace and how he directs us through peace. Because peace is a good thing. If you don't feel peace about it, you probably shouldn't be going into it. There's something that's going on, you're like, I just don't feel peace about that. Follow that. Or, you know what, I feel peace about that. That's, hmm. All right, Lord, come on now. Stir it up in me. This is is something I should do. And watch this. You may not even have to hear the voice of God. You may not even, all you, just that peace will lead you right through. And then eventually, watch this, he'll give you a word. And now, boom, let's do it. And then we get there. And it'll work. I mean, again, I'm going to share a lot of things that the Lord has done in my life to get me to where I'm at and even to where I'm going to get to, where I'm heading to. I'm not leaving or anything like that, but I'm just saying (laughs) we're all going there. We're all going to get to a place where it's going to be extremely, I believe, exciting and incredible. Let me share this last thing real quick, and I know Maybe Remy's back there already. Like, come on, Dad. And Reuben hadn't he hadn't ticked it yet, and we're good, amen. I remember when I first got saved, and and uh, no, 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 this is not when I first got saved. I was already I was already in ministry and things, and I was a youth pastor. And I remember one time I got pulled into the office, you know, by my pastor, and uh, man, it was kind of a pretty. Uh, it was a pretty intense talk. I wasn't doing the talking. He was. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you know, it was, it was a, like I said in the first service, I, I, you know, I got chewed out. And uh, I remember leaving that office that day, and I didn't know what to think. I was like, that was pretty intense. And it wasn't even my fault, the reason why I got chewed out. But I remember getting in my car, and I thought to myself, I said, man, God, was that, was that really necessary? Did, 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 did there have to be, did he have to kind of talk to me like that, you know? I was just talking, talking to the Lord. And I felt a little bit discouraged, guys. I mean, you know, it happens. Not, not fully, but I was a little bit there. I was on the verge, you know, I was there. But at the same time, I was just like, God, what, you know, what happened? What's, what's going on? What Said, and I look at this. I felt the Lord say this to me, Sister Aurora. He said, Son, that wasn't correction, that was direction. 
I said, what? He says, yeah, that wasn't correction. That was direction. Because where you're heading to, where you were heading to, no, 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 you needed to get over here. I was like, whoa. And this is why I said this at the very beginning. Sometimes we confuse direction with correction. And we think that they're trying to correct us, trying to tell us what to do. But in reality, it's not even that. It's really direction. Because people may be able to see that you're going in the wrong direction. And a lot of times, you just got to take that in. Sometimes you got to learn to be humble enough to receive it. Because here, here's how God put it to me. He says, when you learn how to properly digest correction, it will release the nutrients that you need for your authority. Because listen, guys, as parents, you need to have at least some sort of structure in your house. You know, you got to have structure of some sort. You can't just let them do whatever they want to do. You got to be able to have some authority. You got to be able to have, you know, and, and, and I know it's not, it's easier said than done. But you, you see, this is where the spirit of the Lord is, is going to have to lead you. Because I've seen families like that where the, the mom or the dad, they just say it one time. They just tell them, this is what I want you to do. And boom, they do it. Now, that's very far, you know, very few in between. I know it's, it's, but these, they have learned to be led by the spirit where the child even feels the spirit of God convict in their heart. <sighs> That's some powerful stuff. Listen, my wife does it to me all the time. She, she don't mean to do it, but I have learned to submit myself to the, to the presence of God in her. So there'll be some times where she just says something to me, and I could almost feel like saying, I'm the boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't tell me what to do. But if I do that, I just messed up, man. I messed it up. Because I, what, 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 I just caused division. And, and so, listen, my wife will say something to me, and I may have kind of got out of line. Because I, I do that quite often at home. But watch this. Immediately, I can feel something on the inside of me like, that wasn't good, son. I'm like, man. And then I'm just like, mm. so then I'm like, okay, God, give me wisdom. How, what do I need to say <laughs> so I can get back in the game? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what do I need to say? And the Lord just say, hey, just acknowledge that you were wrong and that you didn't, you didn't mean to go into that area. So I'm just like, okay. But I have to give it some time, though. I let, let that, I got to <laughs> swallow that. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it, guys. And it's like, you know, honey, you have to approach it softly, man. Because she already knows. She's looking at me like that. And I'm like, honey, I shouldn't have said that. Forgive me, I'm sorry. That, I said it the wrong way. That's not, I, I, that's not how I was supposed to say it. That's, I said it, this is what I meant to say. And she'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. I said, but I'm sorry that I said it that way. There's a whole lot of that that goes on in marriage. I hope you all guys know this. Like, that's one of the biggest words, forgiveness. <laughs> like, oh, I'm tired of it. No, no, no. It's because, hey, listen, we, 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 it, it, we got to work together in this thing. We got a life to build together. God put us together. Come on, somebody, praise God. I mean, we, we're not each other's enemy. Here's the way, here's the way I remember we, we got told. We got told this. When we got married, they said, it's like if you guys went to Afghanistan, you got dropped off in Afghanistan, and, and nobody else talks your language but you two. And you can't understand what they're saying, and they can't understand what you're saying, so you can't listen to them. You can't hear them. I don't know what you're I don't know. I don't know what they just said. I have no idea. Let me see. I have to say it again. I don't got you. I don't know what he's saying. But, babe, me and you have to communicate. We're going to have to make it happen. We're going to have to make it through this, this place together, 
We're going to have to work it out. Come on, man. I'll eat rice and beans with you if, you, if that's all you like to eat, because that's all she likes to eat, rice and beans. And like, okay, so we're going to do this. But every now and then throw a weenie in there or something, like throw a piece of carne, something. But we, I'm good. We, we can make it happen. Where in the, why in the world am I telling y'all this? Y'all are like knowing my business up in here. Next thing you know, a big package of weenies going to show up at the door. <laughs> bing, bing. That's them weenies. There they are. Praise the Lord. Anyways. Anyways, right? Come on, somebody. Anyways, come on. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you, God, this morning for your presence in this house. God, we acknowledge you right now. We acknowledge you. You are here. We thank you, God, that you're with us today. Father, and I'm asking, Lord, right now that you would just be a director in your people's lives. Let them, let them be directed. As soon as they walk out this door, Father, I'm just asking right now, God, that the direction, power begin to start working in their lives. That they will get something fresh in their mind. That they will get a fresh idea, a fresh plan, a fresh concept, something new. God, that they would desire your voice, your leadership. That you would lead them, direct them in whatever paths they need to walk in, God. I thank you, Father, that from this day forward, they will walk with a new step. Praise God. Let them be sensitive to your nudging. Let them be sensitive to your leadership on the inside of them, Father. Let them not be quick to anger, but let them be slow to anger. Let them not be quick to talk, but let them be quick to listen. Let them be slow to speak. Father, I speak over every marriage in this room. I declare right now that every marriage in this room is blessed. Every relationship in this room is blessed. Every child in this room is blessed. God, that you are reaching in into their hearts and molding it into the very heart of God. We thank you, Father, that love rules and that your spirit directs. I thank you for this, God. Come on, somebody say this with me. Father God, this morning, I receive this word of direction. God, by your spirit, direct me. Lead me. I will acknowledge you in all my ways as you direct my paths. Thank you, Father. That I not only have a teacher, but I have a director right on the inside of me, showing me, guiding me, and leading me. And I thank you, Father, that I am heading in the right direction. I receive every word that was spoken into my life, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen.